Hello, my name is Jan Mattes. I'm Chief Product Owner of Signavio Process Analysis and Mining, and I will now give you an overview about process analysis and mining capabilities and also a demo. So let's start with a couple of slides. Um, you basically are probably aware that Signavio offers two kinds of process analysis and mining solution, process insights and process intelligence. And you might have wondered why, basically. Look at your car. It consists of thousands of sensors and uh, creates millions of data points. And same is the case for your SAP business suite and all of your business solutions. And if you want to get out of the box diagnosis and recommendations about your ERP system, then Process Insights is the go-to tool because it offers you out of the box insights and can tell you how your organization, how your ERP is running. And if you further want to drill down and also connect it with third-party solutions, non-SAP solutions, and extract and transform uh, your own business processes, then you go for process intelligence, which is the natural extension of process insights and where also an integration with plug and gain is available. So let's now overview um, process insights itself. As mentioned, it's the simplest way to uh, dig into your SAP solutions and understand basically the performance of your SAP solutions. And it's free, out-of-the-box content, and also the solution, the discovery edition of Process Insights, is free to use. It has a limited scope, but basically you can use it without purchasing it. And uh, hopefully then you convert to the full version of Process Insights. And with that, you might then also uh, extend it using plug and gain to Process Intelligence to deep dive even more. So the content that we offer is basically manifold. It's first of all process flows, it's performance indicators, but it's also documentation, so-called analysis guides and reference guides, which help you. And the most helpful uh, content is correction recommendations, increase, let's say, the number of payment runs, set up payment runs, all those recommendations, including what to do is part of the solution. And also we recommend innovations, so additional solutions you might add to your SAP landscape. That's freely available and out of the box. No consultant knowledge needed for that. It's basically the aggregation of thousands of consulting hours uh, with SAP solutions brought into a solution. So as summarized, Process Insights, the fastest way to take process analysis into actions for your SAP solutions. It has built-in learning, uh, so you don't need to be a process expert and you don't need to be a solution expert to use that solution because it's self-explanatory and has help embedded. And we have also for the processes um, detailed analysis guides which tell you how to analyze your processes and uh, where to find um, improvement potential. It's available in eight languages, also with EU access only and certified uh, for operations and also for development. So what is now process intelligence and what are, is the content that you might be leveraging? So process intelligence is your way to extract, transform and analyze any process in any solution. And we also provide you out of the box content called value accelerators. You see here a screenshot of the value accelerator library and you see what solutions are supported. It's not only SAP solutions like ECC, S4HANA, public and private cloud, but also um, a ton of um, external solutions, which are uh, often provided by our partners. And those partners uh, then also give you uh, continuous support on uh, adding new content and uh, additional solutions that you might uh, leverage with that uh, value accelerator content is, for instance, Jira, ServiceNow, and other solutions. And as mentioned, um, the integration to Process Insights is provided as well using the plugin gain connector. And every data that you can basically spot in Process Insights is also available for you via plugin gain um, and the extended analysis that you can do with Process Intelligence. Let me quickly explain before I go to the demo how the integration works. 
So your ECC and S4HANA system might be in uh, on-premise landscape and you don't want to trans, uh, extract basically all data you have from that. Therefore, we uh, define the data collection in Process Insights in the cloud and load only the needed data into the cloud and then we can provide you those out of the box diagnosis and recommendations and via plug and gain, again, an integration flow and an extraction flow, which adds then the data from Process Insights into Process Intelligence. Let's now go into a quick demo. So this is the Signavio Process Collaboration Hub, and we have basically all end-to-end -end processes set up for you. And if you want to deep dive into uh, a process like the source to pay, you can basically see uh, uh, what um, the process steps are, how they are running, but also you can really deep dive into the areas itself. Let's assume we would like to deep dive now into invoice to pay for your supplier uh, payments and your purchasing. And... Um, you would then basically click here on supplier payment from purchasing. There is also without purchase orders, supplier payments. But let's now go into the um, first step, which is going into the process um, insights, process flow analysis. I click here on process flows and with that process insights open um, and directly drills into um, that supplier invoice issuing with purchase order to uh, accounts payable clearing. That's the process and you see here uh, the steps that the process consists of and you see also um, the um, times that you need for each step and also you can uh, deep dive into the data itself. Let's say here is the uh, document uh, ready to be cleared before clearing and um, let me go back to see uh, the blockers in more detail. So these are the blockers you see here underneath. In every step, you find basically how good are you in your process. You see many of the numbers being green or blue, which is a good indication, but some of the numbers like supplier invoices created after posting date look not so great at all. So you can spot at a glance uh, where you are doing good and also um, are, you are able to deep dive here. If you want to uh, basically understand uh, what areas of improvement you might be leveraging for your supplier invoice issuing, then you find here the improvement opportunities. You can here easily filter and let's say you want to reduce your early supplier payments, then you should look here into that blocker. Um, you might go the opposite direction and identify basically uh, delayed payments. And here basically um, you see what uh, blockers are interesting for you. Let's now drill into such a blocker, like here, um, accounts payable items cleared after the net due date. That's 24%. And you see here with that box, uh, it's 3,500 items that we have and three correction recommendations. Now, what is a correction recommendation? Let's drill into that. I click now into uh, that blocker and that basically tells me, first of all, gives me an overview. How am I doing compared to other businesses? So you see uh, the number is 24%, rather high number. So there is a high improvement um, potential that you might leverage. You can always um, drill down, basically. You see this is the drill down for company codes. And you can also see the detailed data that you have extracted from your system, see the trends depicted. Um, basically the number of items, but also the uh, percentage of those items. And here are now the correction recommendations. So if you want to avoid that payment happens after that due date, then we have three recommendations, which are from an effort point of view, all very low. You see that basically here. And the impact is rather high. So uh, let me uh, check here uh, the three. So it's 165 open items where blocked for payment were found where the net due date is in the future. Uh, we have 63 open items without a payment method um, and th therefore also the net due date is in the future. And uh, we have one item where the supplier uh, is missing address information and therefore also um, a net due date in the future. 
And what could I do now about this? I click here now into such a correction recommendation and you see what transactions I need to be calling or how I could be setting up uh, basically my business partners and uh, make my process way smoother. So, so much for process insights. Now let's have a look into process intelligence. So let's now go into uh, process intelligence. I'm now again in uh, the process collaboration hub. And um, this time I choose the link into process intelligence. First, let me look into the execution analysis, uh, which gives me similar information as we have it in process insights, but from a different angle and in a different visualization and a different granularity to deep dive. So this is basically the main process flow about supplier payment from purchasing. And you see here a pretty easy view, like what are the steps from the start to create purchase orders, supplier invoice, um, the, create the invoice uh, via interface and move immediately uh, uh, to free payment and then do the payment clearing in uh, accounts payable, ideally via payment run. That's basically the flow. You see also the numbers. But if I drill down into the activities, I basically can enhance this and uh, see uh, what other activities might be uh, viewed. And also, if I see the number of paths and decrease the number of paths, I get a way more complex picture. The main branch is still the same, but I see lots of side branches and I can now, now also um, deep dive into those. Um, on the bottom, I see a couple of uh, aggregated KPIs, um, pretty close to what you also seen in Process Insights. And I see also the process executions run, runs. And uh, again, I can now filter for the variance. And uh, always, if I have lots of um, arrows and additions here, then something is getting odd or there are lots of variants around that. And if I scroll even deeper, then I see also a drill down by my company codes, my subsidiaries, let's say. And I can easily spot, let's say, that for one of my company codes, one of my subsidiaries, um, the overall score is not so nice at all. Now let's have a look into our process variant analysis to understand a bit more detailed what is going on here. So let me first view here uh, from top to button. This is uh, basically the variant passes that I have. And uh, now I've been filtering on a variant, which is not having so many items. Let me go for the main branch, which is 12,053 uh, items. That's the main branch. Majority of my um, activities go via that uh, variant. And um, let me now click here on the second most and that's basically an interesting one. Whereas this one is rather straightforward from the create purchase order to supplier invoicing and, and yada, yada, yada. Uh, but here, the second one is something like odd. Let me um, zoom in here a bit. And uh, you see the situation basically. Here, first, we have the supplier invoice created. And then afterwards, the purchase order, which is definitely not the ideal way to go, to, to go for. And it starts directly with the supplier invoicing. That's something like a learning you could uh, take easily with that. And you see how powerful that is. You can see all of your variants and uh, deep dive into those which have a relevant number. And of course, you can sort the number of cases also in the different order, or you might basically look on the cycle time. And again, uh, you might see um, uh, interesting insights by just sorting the cycle time, what is the, the shortest cycle time and what is the longest cycle time. Let's now go a bit deeper and uh, there you see the performance of all those process variants. And um, here is now the process variants, um, uh, again, depicted here for the three main branches, uh, the ones that we just seen on top. Let me now uh, remove those um, two here and just see what's what's basically the flow here. Again, I can uh, click on the cycle time. That's what I have here, the occurrences, and uh, also what is the default that is um, uh, the desired one. 
So what you spot here right away is mm, there are certain situations and what can I do now in my system? Um, and uh, you've seen that right away and where to start basically also. And uh, you've seen it right away in, in the first um, process execution barrier. There's, for instance, a company code, a subsidiary, which is looking awkward overall. That is might be a good point to start at. And um, to do so, basically, let me go back now into Process Insights to find out um, what process basically um, uh, is affected and what company um, might be affected by that. So I now show the very same analysis, but here in Process Insights, the correction recommendations, you see basically if I want to improve uh, my, uh, my payments, my supplier payments, um, then I uh, can go to avoid late payments. And uh, the number looks like uh, pretty obvious here. Uh, AP items cleared after net due date. That's basically something I might be looking at. Um, and uh, what is now interesting to see also is, and how does it look for that company code, which is marked red in process intelligence? Therefore, I might be applying a filter. And I prepared that already here as a company code filter for exactly that company. And now let's have a look how that uh, looks for that company. You see the number, um, the company code, you see the numbers are now uh, uh, looking different. You see uh, specifically here in the items cleared more than three days before. It's not only that late payments happen, it's also that early payments happen here for that company code. That's probably also the reason why uh, in the overall score, it didn't look so nice. Again, uh, let's now check one of the correction recommendations. Here, I don't now check into what's available here. And uh, you see um, uh, an option would be definitely to increase the number of the payment runs. Uh, let's go into that. So if payment run uh, is not happening or is not running so often, then you basically uh, leverage, uh, you don't leverage your potential to have accurate payments. Therefore, you might lose discounts. And on the other hand, you might pay late. And uh, payment runs are really a good way. And what we find here also is that uh, four company codes were found where the uh, payment runs are not run daily. And one company code uh, are being executed uh, um, or is, has been found where the payment run is not have happening um, uh, very in, in a very near future. So that's basically it. Um, I think uh, you got a good overview and a good uh, insight now how to leverage process insights and process intelligence. Um, uh, last thing I want to make you aware of in Process Insights, we since 2505, our May release, we now have um, the improvement opportunity dashboards that simplifies your work. Um, your analysis work even more because we provide you here with an easy summary if you want to improve your days payable outstanding. Uh, what are basically the numbers to look at? Here are the early supplier payments, here are the late supplier payments, and basically how uh, are your numbers evolving over time and what are the top correction recommendations. I hope you like what you have seen and stay tuned for more.